What's up? It's me, AGV, the go-getter, and I want to welcome you to the GCO podcast. You see, this is a place you go to to get the pretty, the ugly, and the grind to success. There's always a story to be told and everything that glitter ain't gold. So understand this, there is no need for the cheat code when you got the G code. So get your notebooks and pens ready. It's time for us to get into it. Welcome to the G code. <laughs> You are now listening to the G Code with Adri V. Hey, what's good, my go getters? It's me, Adri V. And you know what time it is where I bring in a dope go getter, of course, to the mic. And um, I'm big on talking to people who are able to give their story as we talk the pretty, the ugly, and the grind to success and what it means to really be a go getter and embody that spirit. And today, you know, I'm excited because I feel like it's been a long time coming with this interview. Big shout out to my guy, Pat Matthews. Because whenever I see this man moving about and doing different things in a community that he's not even from, it makes me excited to want to have a dialogue with this person simply because I want to know your why behind how you move and what you do. And of course, also the man behind the helmet. So ladies and gentlemen, to my go-getters, I want to welcome, of course, to the mic, the number everybody knows is 90. But of course, his name is Mr. Shaq Lawson. What's good, my guy? What's good with it? How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great, doing great. Blessed. You blessed and highly favored? You was blessed. about to add that on to it? Facts, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, you definitely are indeed blessed. Uh, one, this big chain that you rock with the nine zero on it, okay? Is this a number that, you know, you just represent with you being a football player, or is it a number that really has some significance to you? I mean, that, that number mean a lot. I mean, I've been rocking it since I was in high school, mm-hmm. so... And I got a tatted on me too, so that that ninety mean from like coming from the struggle uh, and actually making it. And making you know what it. I'm saying? So I always, well, each team I try to be on, I try to get ninety. It was only one time I didn't have ninety. It was when I played with the Jets. But other than that, I've been ninety my whole life, and it's just it's always just stuck with me. And then and also too, my favorite player was Julius Peppers growing up. Mm. So. And so that, that, that played two parts of it right there. Okay, so I, I love that details because I always want to know because a lot of times people only know you as that and, of course, your last name, right? Um, and with you being someone who plays for the Buffalo Bills, of course, shout out to the Mafia. Shout out. We in the building. I want to dive into just the beginnings of when it comes to any young man, you know, growing up, you have these dreams, goals, and aspirations of actually playing ball or being uh, an artist or whatever that is is and you actually made that and there is a small percentage of individuals who have these dreams who work towards it and who actually make it to the league and you've done that and you're in that small window of that percentage how does it feel and what what do you feel it took you to get there um it it took a lot you know um coming out like coming out of high school i didn't get qualified like I probably graduated high school probably like with a one three, so I had to go talk to the military school. Military school. Yeah. We gotta talk about this. Yeah. Military school. Yeah, military school. It was like um after I graduated, it was like post grad. So mm. those guys went there to, like I already had the scholarships and everything, or, or guys or went there for like to get a scholarship or grades. So I needed to go out there and get my grades and my test score. So. We were basically doing a military lifestyle, getting up at four a.m. Wow. marching. Going to class, then you gotta turn around and go play football. And then when we play football, it's called hard grade. So it's kind of like you practicing kind of like near a graveyard. That's mm. what it's like. That's how it make it so tough about it. But other than that, like you had to spit shine shoes. Come we on. Had to do all, we had to no facial hair, none of that. And making March. your bed. Yeah, I remember one time I got in trouble. I think I snuck out. I snuck out somewhere, me and, the, me and the dogs, we snuck out to go get some pizza because you had a time limit on when you eat. Like, once you get, once somebody get their food, you got like a five-minute clock, and you might got 80 cadets in that line. So, in that five-minute, 80 cadets, you don't got your food. You Wait might not, Yeah, you, yeah, it might be a little struggle. You might, you might miss something. Wow. So, one day I just snuck out and had to, uh, walk the, it, it's like a ring like a bull ring you gotta uh, dress up in full parade uniform with a full loaded rifle and like walk the square for like a certain amount of hours so I, th- I think I had like 60 hours but 
if the rifle or anything slip, fall, or like slip, your, you, your, your hours start, start over. over. You wow. start all over. It took me the whole six months, the whole time I was there to finish. And I finally finished like up to the last day I was there. Wow. And you know, I... I, you know, I like to say I was in ROTC. I enjoyed my ROTC time to the point where I wanted to go to the Army, but we went to war, and I was like, nah, I ain't built for that. But to hear you speak from this place, and for me, when I was in ROTC, it was a different level of respect, um, reverence that you had to have for, like, my Colonel Major, my Sergeant Major, um, and so many different avenues from having to do push-ups because I was late to class. So I'm sure your level of experience was beyond ex- extensive and but for me it also built out discipline and how do you feel that experience of being in that military school and I'm, I'm shocked that you was there like yeah. this right here is this is good yeah, this I'm is still, really I can't good I made it, you know how do you feel like what you learned during that time helped you and kept you sharp in this period because I feel like your, your name is not out here in these streets which is a beautiful thing so I feel like that gotta have some type of reverence to that oh uh, yeah yeah that played a, a lot that and then when my daddy got killed, that's mm. when I really stopped getting in trouble. Like, mm. like really start like buckle down. And yeah. by the time that happened, I was kind of late behind on the grades part. Right. So that's what made me start all over to there. But other than that, by the time I got to Clemson University, it was just a smooth. I wasn't like no other freshman. Like I was getting up, and then when I got there, I knew it was about business. Like if I'm going through this military school, doing all this, I'm like I gotta make it to the league because. It's, it's just ain't no that, way ain't no way and and then to get my degree also which I'm gotta go back and do but I just knew if I could plead Hargrave and one of the toughest thing I ever did in my life was that cause it's just mentally it like mentally try to break you down yeah. like they wanted you to quit like and stuff like that. So by the time I got to Clemson, it was just easy. Freshman year, sophomore year, and I, and then P. A lot of people thought I was gonna really get in trouble because Clemson up the street from where I'm from. So mm. it's kind of from where I'm home. So like, your hood right there. Yeah. All the homies gonna pull up on you man, and tap it. Was, man, I, I blocked everything out for them three years. And, wow. And just, so what kind of discipline do you think it built in you? Because. Uh, from the military standpoint of like you said them hours having to complete that getting up having to pretty much really fight when it comes to getting your food and being strategic with that from a mental standpoint and having to make it through people trying to break you down I feel like we all kind of been in that place you know what was in those moments that you really took from that that you applied today Uh, what I took uh, most of I took is like make the most of your opportunity Mm -hmm. like anything can be taken from you at any time so that's the most thing I took from that situation. And then uh, an opportunity to have that chance to even go to get my grades and stuff right there, too. Like, I mean, it was a lot of people helping me through that way. And I can say that for sure. Yeah. And also, when you got a lot of people that's helping you, it's like a lot of folks you don't want to let down. Yeah, facts, facts. Yeah. And I know for me, that's kind of like where I thrive off of, like, in addition to I, if I mess up, I can't be letting these people down. So it's a lot of other individuals who invested in me. Yeah. And so um, and you said something, you know, like losing your dad. I just lost my mom last year. Oh, yeah, sure and I'm, I'm I ain't going to say how old I'm, I'm 30 plus. Right. And it's been a horrible time. And just getting up, staying creative and pushing and going. And you lost your dad when you were in high school. Yeah. You know, during critical times, just building and being a man and then getting into the league and pushing towards those dreams. And how were you able to mentally, because I think, you know, you can battle depression and grief. Those are like two two things that meet with each other. And I know for myself, I'm learning about it as I go through my counseling and therapy. How were you able to keep your mental health in check during those times? Oh, during those times, it was kind of really tough. Like, mm-hmm. I think probably the first year or two, I was... I was messed up, but then again, I had to really bounce back because I had younger brothers and sisters at the right. time. They was babies, you know. And then my mom was in the uh, in the situation what what happened was also down from that too. So at the time, I'm like, man, I can I can let my mental go down and and let these little kids see like all the crazy stuff, mm-hmm. or just like be there and let them know, big bro is like your yeah. father now. Like I got to make this work. That's why. That's why I'm, that's why I'm going to, after that, that happened. Then I went to Harker. I said, "Man, I gotta make it." Like they counting on me. That's why I ended up leaving early from Clemson because I already, I already knew what time it was, and and then that's why I just was. That's why that's why I had my mind focused on after that. I yeah. think, you know, I mean, 
you know, you know, they say that God do things in 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 ways, you know. But I think that when that situation happened, it just opened me up, like yeah, opened my whole life up, what I could be in. What what I if that had never right. happened today, I think I don't know where I've been right now. That's true because you know a lot of times they say it didn't happen to you, it happened for you. Right. And that's something I'll be trying to like hold on to, but sometimes I'll be wanting to square it with God and I know that's not really like I'll be like, God, you know how I feel about you today. Uh, but that's not really the case. Uh but that alone maybe also gave you like another edge, like you said, to make sure that you you made it to where you need to go and then you made it through Clemson. Made it through Clemson, you enter into the draft. And then you get picked up. What was that experience like? What was that feeling like? And did you get picked up by a team you really wanted to be at? Truth on the table. Uh, I'm going to keep it G <laughs> first. I ain't know nothing about Buffalo. So. <laughs> Who do? You thought it was just like, I what, thought, cows I thought, and stuff out here? No, nah, I thought of New York City. I thought it was part of New York City. I mm. thought everything was the same. But I think everybody does. When I got that call and went on stage and... Uh, and Chuck a commissioner and talk to Dion. Talk to Dion. I knew like everything I I did paid off. I didn't care where I was going. And then now since I've been here, this been home. Like I I was here for the first four years and then left and went to Miami. Now what made you want to leave? Like like why would you want to go to Miami? <laughs> no, no state taxes. <laughs> you know them state no, taxes that. and you know and at that time like. After them four years, that second contract really a point. So yeah, I had true. to go where, where the most money it mm-hmm. was. So it was Miami at the time. So I ended up going down there. And I ain't left Miami since then. Mm, so like, you, stand where I stand where. Yeah, but where you live. But yeah. then after after Miami, you went on to another team. Oh, uh, yeah. I ended up going to, like, Houston for, like, two, three months. You know, it wasn't even... I mean, the city nice. I love the city. Yeah, I, I but just the, came back from there. It's a I great love city. the place. They've got great food and everything, but that whole organization went, they went even. I couldn't even be myself, though, so mm-hmm. I ended up asking for a trade, ended up going to, like, the Jets for a year. It was straight up, though. I mean, mm-hmm. I, but then no, I finally got to the city. You yeah, know? it seemed what it was like. But, yeah, it was straight. You know, I, I like Buffalo. It keep me level-headed, though, you know? It does. It's a place that keep you focused, and we ride for you. Like, Facts. You know what I mean? We When we have players that come in, we sincerely ride for you, and my mother was one of the biggest Bills fan. Like, she would know all y'all information as soon as y'all came on the team. Um, and with you being here, like you said, you know, you love it. It keeps you grounded. What are some aspects of Buffalo that you have learned that you would have been like, you know what, this also gives me another love for it in addition to just being able to be here and play football? Um, like you said, the fans, and not even just the fans, the people in general. I mean, I feel like everybody Buffalo fans is still around <laughs> here at this point. But, I mean, they just, like, they, like you said, they welcome you and everything. And everything is just about Buffalo. They got great food, you know. And just, it's feel, it feel like a country town, like. But this really was my first major city coming to was Buffalo. And yeah. It's not even like, it's a city, but like, other than that, it just feel like more country to me, like, like back in South Carolina, like home. So, yeah. I mean, it just it, it always it always gonna be home. Like that's why I, when I left here the first time, even though I got that bag, I'm like, man, I gotta find a way back to Buffalo. Like, mm-hmm. This is just me. They let me be me, you know. The fans check. No, like, love me up here and things like that. I'm still the last one standing for the Rex Ryan. Listen, and you here. Doug Whaley era, so. And so with you saying that, being one of the last ones standing from that era, you know, what do you think, well, not even what do you think, what has been your focus every time you, you suit up, every time you step on the field for practice? Because you're still always earning your spot and maintaining your spot. Right. You know, so what is what are your thought processes like, you know, when you are on that field and making sure you show up and show out each time? I just take every play like it's my last. Yeah. Especially now since I'm at the back end of my career. Like mm-hmm. now like take take every play. You don't never know when it's your last play or when when this game gonna be done. Cause eventually we can't you can't play this forever. Like like I said, I'm kind of at the back end towards my career. I'll probably ch- hopefully try to get three or four more left. Mm-hmm. But, and you will. And yeah, you will. You definitely will. Yeah. But other than that, that's what... Mm. 
So let's talk about that because this is something uh, when my friends used to play um, and, you know, we just lost my guy, Mike Williams, and, you know, he was someone I would have conversations about with this and my guy, Buck, who went to UB, James Starks, you know, what it looks like after. And for me, I used to always look at them as like, you guys are these great figures while you're here and we need to build up this brand and maintain this brand while you're here because after the game, what is next? And for what I've had to learn about you, you you are already building and positioning yourself for what it looks like after the game. And why do you feel like that is important? And what are some of the plans and things you could talk about right now? Oh, uh, I feel like that because I mean, I feel like when I get 30, it's going to be a new life. You like starting like almost over again. So mm-hmm. I just want to have a plan because all, all my life, that's all I know was football. So I don't want to get in this weird world and be like, I'm lost without football. So. My plan was I, I gotta be on some I gotta be on somebody TV show. Like I gotta <laughs> be on TV because, I mean, I I just you know I'm funny and stuff <laughs> like that. So uh, and then my and I my, I make some music from time to time. Too, yeah, so we are gonna talk about that. We gonna talk to about these tracks. Brand, brand that out a little bit and things like that. But yeah, I got some some like trucking company and other business. Try to keep me busy yeah. busy when I'm done, but. I definitely want to get back to either coaching or, mm-hmm. but not not in the higher level. Yeah, I want to like develop my own my own like style of coaching. Yeah, not even my style of coaching. Just you know, like the kids, like you know. So, and then I don't want to have that busy schedule. So you know, you get a little rec league team. <laughs> No, okay. Have a little fun. fun. Now let's talk about the music. You mentioned it, and when I was on your Instagram, I'm like, "What's this link going to?" And then here it is. We go into, oh, of course, your song. Of course, was who was the artist that was was with oh, you? Steve's my boy, Steve's yeah. from Broward County. Shout out to my boy. Whatever. Talk about that. And I feel like either an athlete is rapping or a rapper is wanting to be an athlete, right? It's like they want to be us, we want to be them. It's it's that whole aspect of it. So why do you feel it was just a natural? thing for you to go into um the crazy the crazy part i ain't never like i think i just tried it out one time and it was like man i like your voice and, and how way i sound and then you like, do that's have my a very first nice song. like tone you yeah do that, radio you yeah go into that's radio too I love that. <laughs> but that's my actually my first song what you're talking about it was actually my first song making right there so when i played i'm like i kind of sound straight so I end up doing all season uh, on my free time. I go, I be in the studio, make another track. I'm trying to drop something soon though. I got a plan. I'm gonna drop it though. No, I'm just saying. Can I get on the track? Cause I'm nice like Park. Okay, Friday. yeah, get on the track. You know what I'm saying? Double back, Probably like twice. I know. <laughs> Don't be yeah. laughing. I see you over there. <laughs> trying to laugh. Nah, we we'll right, change the voice. Sure nice. you know? Okay. All right, you trying to say my voice don't sound good right now? I will write something down for you. Okay. Then it be straight right. though, you know. Okay, I, I, my, what you, I feel like you're not trying to like. Nah, I ain't trying to like. I'm being like you can, hey, your you voice probably sound great though. My my pen might be nice. Yeah. Are you okay? Just don't, right. just don't, don't just, just don't sound mean when you rap. Though. Okay, yeah. nah, no, I'm not a thug. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I can't. Not be. no look Kim. <laughs> no, not that either. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not that. <laughs> but you know, also when it comes to music. I know for me, it moves me, and whether it's ups and downs, it keeps me motivated. What are you listening to, you know, when you need to get yourself in a game? Like, what would be Shaq Lawson's five tracks if you had to create your soundtrack of life? Uh, your top man. five, top five, top five. Five tracks. Mm-hmm. I'm about to go back a little old school. Oh, man. okay. Like I, I do love old I like oh any type of nineties music I like, you know. Uh uh-huh. probably uh if I wanna go too like hard rap back in the day, I'd probably go Pastor Troy. Oh, Some we go Pastor Troy, like that, you know okay. What, I'm what song uh, from Pastor Troy? Vice versa, let's go to war. He got Ooh. so many he got so many songs but you so when you think? hear Pastor Troy, because this this just gave me a whole different viewpoint of you, because yeah. you know when people talk music, they were you gonna can bring see somebody where you're, young, yeah. They were you know, so what 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 does his music do for you? Just get me in that mode. I just hear it. Just get me in that mode. Like he just be <laughs> screaming. Yeah. Uh, okay, we got Pastor Troy. But I ain't gonna lie to who you. Else? I, I like all type of music. You though. Got four more. I need five. So who else? Pastor we got, Troy. We got Pastor Troy. Who else? I listen to No Cap. You know. Um, I listen to Lil Baby, all them, 
make sure he's uh, okay. You got a little baby. What's a what's a little baby song that you that's a go to for you? That's gonna get you in the in the zone. You know the freestyle. You know the, the freestyle he got. You right. Yo, yep. I will give you that. All right. So you got two. I mean three more. What's another one? <laughs> oh, it's kind of hard. Let me think about it. I'm gonna get on. Probably money bag, yo, or something like that. Uh huh. You no. Know. All right, money bag. It's really depend on what song is hot right now. Cause me, I can just, I can just jump around like, be like, oh, this song hot. But I'm gonna like listen to this before again. Cause sometimes you might, I ain't gonna lie to you, I might, you might catch me with a country song, Jason Aldino. Oh, you know what okay, I'm look at you. That's my dog right now. You all see, right. I, I just be mixing it up sometimes, like country, uh-huh. all type of, you know, a little different stuff. Okay, I'll take that. And yeah. since you said Jason, you said Jason. Jason, I did. Yeah. Know. All right. Now give me, give me. Something? So that's four. We got mm-hmm. um, Troy, Pastor baby. Troy, yeah, baby, you got. Uh, who else? You just. Who, I'm missing somebody. He said somebody else. Yeah, I'm. All, I'm always Money gonna bag, listen. Yo, Jason. I ain't gonna lie. One more. Oh, I see. I ain't, I can't say like this. Is gonna be a category because all all my rappers from South Carolina. They gonna man, be mad at you. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah. I'm talking about them boys. I listen okay. to all them boys. I got it. Them boys know what I'm talking about. But all them boys, I put them in a category with they show because I always show love to the crib with the As music you part. That whenever I'm somewhere, I'm always going to shout my boys from Buffalo, facts, my Buffalo facts. kids, every right. time I ride for them. So, all right, I'll, I'll let you ride up with that. So, mm-hmm. I'm going to let you marinate, you know, the last time I talk to you, you're going to have to give me specific tracks. Okay, I'll give you I a say your soundtracks of life, not the artist. Yeah, my bad. We're going to work right. on that. Okay. It's okay. It's, it's, you just <laughs> kind of put me on the spot. I was it, kinda... You know, I just thought you was musically inclined I am, to I tap am, in. I just, like... I just my flow so switch up. Lights. It just it just switch up. Like I probably want to listen to the same song. I feel you. Every you know what I'm saying. But that 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 game. If I'm listening to that song, I might play it ten times. That whole before the game. Yeah, I'm on yeah. that. I'm on that um album right now. Diddy joint love album. Yeah. You, you ain't heard Diddy album yet? No, I ain't heard Diddy album. All right, you got homework to do. You got to hear that I new know, album. Shit, yeah, okay, because I I got one of his tracks that's on Back to Back. So when you okay. said that, I'm definitely one of those people. So, I'll play the joint all the way out. So you make sure you know the words, right? Yeah, it's a little bit. I don't know why I can't. I could never know full songs. As much as this is my career, I don't. It's, it's sad, but... I take that, you know what I mean? Because I got to digest so much. Oh, yeah. That's You're just right. what it is. So before you go, I always want to ask, you know, my guests to give me your G-Coast of success, you know, from your, your beginnings of military school, you know, every experience that you have had and the things you've learned really allow you to walk away with these codes, right, that you kind of live by. I like to sometimes call them like, you know, your Boy Scout patches. You learned this lesson, right? And these are what I like to call the G codes. So what would be three G codes, you know, that you kind of live by today that you have learned along the way, lessons of life? Respect. That's one of my G codes. Respect? Yeah, you got to respect. elaborate on that. This way, I mean... Just get, I mean, you want to respect people with the most up respect. I mean, that's from, I guess, my people taught me that. That's a down south thing. So no, I agree. I just give respect when it's earned, you know what I'm saying? Like, never hate on nobody, you know, but always treat everybody equal. For real. I respect Two, that. Mm-hmm. I say, um, uh, I say, like, ambition. You gotta be this, like, Whatever you don't, for one, just I think just don't never let nobody tell you, you can't do something like like if you want to go be a doctor, lawyer, anything, not just football, anything, anything you want to be, like you'll practice that craft and be a ambition about it and work on it every day. Mm-hmm. Like that's why me like I my I remember this one time. I'm sorry for stopping the but oh, no, I remember this teacher ahead. told me I went and like. She said a little slick. I got, I got caught cheating on the test. <laughs> she told I was my eyes say it's better to cheat than repeat. Yeah, she told mama. <laughs> she told mama I'm gonna be working in a trash dump or something. She wow. said, and then then that that that's when it really clicked. I'm like, I said I'm I'm gonna make play football. I'm gonna make it, and then that's gonna be the same teacher. I asked you should have sent her a pick. couple trash bands herself. Yeah. Fresh new joint sign. My third one, I say. Family, mm. you know, family is the most important thing because you got the family that's gonna hate and you got the family that's gonna be with you through the tough times when you're not, not nothing, but 
family. Like I learned from both sides, like mm-hmm. of it, the good and the bad. Bro. That's indeed that's true right there. Now speaking of family, I feel like you're kind of in a place of building out families when it comes to young men. I feel like I got a chance to see a few of your your camps that you have had. Now, why do you feel you know it's important to have these camps and working with the next generation? Oh, uh, it's important. It's important to me because. At the time, I was six, seven years old, the same kid, needed to go Secret Santa, get camp, and trying to build, like trying to help me get one, uh, get me where I was at at that age. And then me man, me looking out, if I, I told myself, if anything, if I always make it, I was going to be involved with the youth, the kids, and things like that. So I just wanted them give them the same opportunity that an older guy gave me and mm-hmm. then maybe they would look up one day and say uh, Shaq aspired me to do the same thing right. just basically passing it down from generation to generation and when you're doing these camps how often well most of the time you're always there yeah. why do you think you being present is important them kids so they can really show that you really care and actually teaching them something they, they look at like okay Shaq really care about my future um, trying to be a big part of my success so mm-hmm. And just dropping, not even just on no sports level, just dropping some knowledge. Let them hear something that if they don't got a big brother around and things like that, or where their parents try to tell them something, but they don't want to listen, but hear it from somebody that did it before, things right. like that. You know. And you, you're that example for them. Try to be. <laughs> I mean, you're doing a good job. Your name stay out the uh, stay out the blogs and all that stuff. So oh, you, snap, listen, yo. Listen, you're doing, you're doing a good job, oh, okay? You oh, doing don't a jinx good. that on me, please. You doing a good. <laughs> oh man, if we you get do- down here, I might be on the block. <laughs> Listen, we gonna we gonna make sure you stay good. We gotta we gotta keep somebody Facts. in yeah, it. Yeah, I got keep to keep somebody in the box. You know what I mean? But you know, for me, I'm always about being a go getter and pushing that message. Like that's my message, and just going after things, no matter what comes your way, no what tries to stop you. So, um, in your your mind, what's your definition of a go getter, and why is it important to be one? My definition of go getter is, I mean, my definition of go getter, just go. You gotta go up and you gotta get it. Like, ain't nothing in this world for free mm-hmm. or no handout. So, I don't care what it is. You gotta if you got a family to take care of, you just gotta make a sacrifice, do it the right way, you know. You know, people be doing stuff the wrong way, but do it the right way, you know. And it's 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 always gonna be some good come from that, you know. The, you're gonna be you're gonna be blessed, you know. How much you help others and things like that, you're just gonna get a big blessing from it. Well, there it is. My guy said, "Do it the right way. You're yeah. gonna be blessed. That's what it is." Now, listen. How can the people lock in with you if they ever want to come to a camp when you're doing it? Tap in with your music, follow you, support you. What, what can they do to say? Yeah, y'all follow me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say, man. Now nah, y'all tap in. You know, I have my camp every summer. You know, if you want to bring your kids down there, I have it every summer. But you know, you can fi- easily find me on IG. You know, uh-huh. things like that. My music. I got another project about to come out. Oh, so, I need the exclusive. Neighborhood Hero. Okay. Yeah, I got a re- like, it's legit, you know. I really, I really need you to play it one day. Okay, okay yeah. You know what I'm it's really it. hard. If I had, like, it's a little clean me. version, you yeah, know I need it clean. Yeah. You got to have it clean. As but, long as it's clean, I rock with you. <laughs> Yeah, it gotta be raw, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's raw. It's it is. Okay, I'm okay. A, once we get off, once we get off, I'm player. <laughs> I got it here. So everything, Shaq Lawson on uh, IG. Yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. There it is. Well, listen, my go getters. Big shout to my guy Shaq Lawson pulling in, tapping in, sharing his story. Definitely one that I did not expect with the military school, but it's clear and evident that he learned a lot from that and it pushed him through and it failed. That is and beyond. Appreciate you for tapping in. Thank you. In the back, hardly soap in the bathroom, we bathe with that. Made a couple meal, put my city on my back. Started from the bottom, now we chillin' with the racks. When I lost my paws, man, it set a nigga back. Came a long way, man, we used to serving packs. Couple niggas hating, so you know we never lack. Neighborhood hero, that's a fact. Cause I'm a neighborhood hero. Started from the bottom, now we got it. I'm the neighborhood hero. And ain't nothing that I see that I can't buy. 
be thinking about them days I used to cry. Now we the neighborhood heroes. Yeah. Now we the neighborhood heroes. We are. Think about the time when I used to rock your bows. Now I'm about to spend a whole ticket on some homes. Made it out the hood, so we still throw them foes. My dog did his time, but he still told him pose. Diamonds on my wrist, AP on TikTok. Way my diamonds dancing, they be dancing like they TikTok. They all the Drake pussy, nigga, we can switch mops. Never switch sides, pussy, nigga, we don't I'm criss cross. Hood hero. Started from the bottom, now we got it, I'm the neighborhood hero And ain't nothing that I see that I can't buy cause I'm a neighborhood hero I be thinking about them days I used to cry, now we the neighborhood heroes, yeah Now we the neighborhood heroes, who we are to subscribe to the G-Code Podcast. Find it on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and all places a podcast lives. Want to catch up on the G-Code Podcast? Well, go to www.adrivthegogetter.com and also subscribe on SoundCloud and YouTube. Remember, you can check a new episode out each and every Wednesday as we get you over the hump with the G-Code. I was born in the G-Code embedded in my blood. Matter of fact, you just triggered a level orange G-Code security threat. 